issue that we want to talk about is street crime in Kuala Lumpur. In the Malaysian context, street crime includes three main categories, namely snatch thief, individual robbery without guns, uh, gang robbery without guns. So street crime is a growing problem in Malaysia, especially snatch thief, particularly in Kuala Lumpur, that the Ministry of Home Affairs is directing all efforts to combat street crimes. This was due to the fact that street crimes frequently resulted in severe and traumatic impacts such as lingering fear to victim, their families and the community. In certain circumstances, street crimes can end in death or serious injuries to victims. So why did we choose Kuala Lumpur? Street crime statistics in Kuala Lumpur are very high compared to other states in Malaysia. This is because street crime often occurs in developed downtown areas that are busy with business activities but have few activities at night like other cities around the world which create a risk of crime. The result of the CPT-80 audit study found 47.1% of people who stay in Kuala Lumpur at, felt unsafe at night. While based on other observations, from the perspective of urban users, only 38.8% feel unsafe to be in the city centre at night. Because of the image of the fair downtown business district and should be avoided, this circumstances has a negative impact on the region. The street in the core business area and retail malls require special attention to ensure that users feel safe. Hi and Assalamualaikum, my name is Nazatul Farifaika Binti Johan. Today, I would like to explain about the roles of government and municipal council in overcoming the crime prevention in Kuala Lumpur. For the DBKL honors as City Hall of Kuala Lumpur roles in overcoming the urban security issue in our capital city is by installing CCTV in hotspot areas. Datuk Sri Shahidan Kasim, Federal Territories Minister, stated that 2,000 more CCTV cameras will be installed by the end of this year in order to help the police monitor crime in Kuala Lumpur. By installing CCTV in high-risk areas, all the concrete that alarms and surveillance captured are very useful for the investigation purpose. It's because when the thief are aware with the presence of the digital guardian, they might think twice before committing a crime. This figure shows the crime in the ratio per 1,000 population for Malaysia in 2019. Wilayah Persekutuan Kuala Lumpur recorded the highest number of crimes in 2018 and 2019 which is 492.3. Roughly, we can see that Kuala Lumpur as the capital city in Malaysia contributes the highest amount of crime committed in Malaysia. Moving on to the second role is by government. The government rules in overcoming the issue of urban security in Kuala Lumpur is by introducing the Kuala Lumpur Safe City Programs. Kuala Lumpur Safe City Program prime focus is creating a crime-free environment and to reduce the likelihood of crime offenders in the city. One of the examples is setting up mobile police station at certain hotspots. The police station at Berjaya Town Square or known as Imbi Street is one of the examples. The placement of mobile station and petrol vehicle unit is focuses on repeated or higher case areas such as in Ampang and Bukit Bintang area have helped much in crime prevention in Kuala Lumpur. This effort indirectly has increased the public confidence on their safety is extremely essential. The involvement from police officers in commercial areas, street and residential areas are welcome and should be monitored frequently. The last role of government in overcoming the issue of urban security in Kuala Lumpur is by using the Safe City Monitoring System SCMS, which integrated with Police Reporting System RPS. The Safe Monitoring System improve data sharing of crime information and monitor the effectiveness of crime prevention measures undertaken by Royal Malaysian Police, local authorities, Ministry of Home Affairs and several related agencies. Geoprocessing analysis is important function in the system which enable users to generate various options to determine crime patterns, hotspot and crime prone area. The crime that occurs repeatedly in the certain area will notify the local authorities automatically. The red shadow in the map is showing a higher case area of repeated criminal cases occur, which the crime case per square kilometer also taken into account. Meanwhile, the orange is considered as small red case area and yellow is low case area. Indirectly, it will notify the local authorities to identify the solution as for example, 
providing lighting in the street, segregation CCTV, side mirrors, police patrol in hospital area, and many more. This is how the police and local authorities integrate together in performing their duties for crime prevention. Assalamualaikum. My name is Mama Febi Roslan. And as for my part, I will um, tell how the netizen react regarding the issue that is security Kuala Lumpur is being led due to more foreigners come to Kuala Lumpur to have a better life. So since that issue is being held, the netizen have give full cooperation to the police by giving information, any kind of information. The involvement of the people is very important in helping the PDRM to deal with the crime and the effort of the element to try to strengthen the country's sovereignty and the people's peace. The society also has become more brave in giving information um, if they uh, saw a suspicious person or suspicious incident that happened in their surrounding. As we can see this day, the society take footage or picture so they have enough proof to give to PDRM. This kind of information um, will give um, PDRM um, time and well organized to capture the thief and they have proof to do some act towards the thief or that person. So society has become more aware about what happening in the environment because the rate of crime has increased year by year due to um, a manpower shortage in the PDRM. So, um, therefore, they had a chain, uh, and so the netizen had chain their personal safety, such as English, their personal safety from be aware of their surrounding at all time and trust their instinct because heart always tell the truth stay in wheel lead populated pathway avoid shortcut because at shortcut the reason will be easy target the society also had travel in group because it's more safer they always safety in numbers moreover they had practice walk with their head upright and make eye contact Thief often target victim who are not uh, paying attention to their surrounding or who are lacking down. Plus, most of the society has um, taking defensive classes to protect their beloved and themselves from being the victim of the crime. By taking um, defensive uh, class skill, it will protect themselves from any harm. That's all from me thank you hi so we are back so for this part i will concerning on the challenge that is facing by pdrm so to start off pdrm is lack of manpower this is a uh, an internal aspect related to human capital which is among the crucial element in the development and well-being of a country General of Police Tan Sri Khalid Abu Bakar said there is a need to increase and balance the police personnel to people ratio. According to the current statistic, the PDRM has a strength of 1,300 officers including the senior officer, civil servant and junior officer. Compared to 30 million people, that number is still low to keeping the national security in safe. In order to keep nation well being, PDRM must recruit around 6,000 to 7,000 yearly to make up for deficiency. This had caused to shift a number of development programs, including plans to replace logistic equipment and to build living quarters for officers and personnel, said by Tansri Abdul Khalid. The second challenge in this day, crime has been getting more complex. As the PDIM facing the crime become more complex and sophisticated, PDRM through its department was constantly looking at means to strengthen the force in its capability and efficiency. This include acquiring increasing strategies and resources, 
the PDRM had to deal with hardency in identifying the origin of the offender, weakness in the existing law and prosecution, and increase in privacy and intellectual property infringement. Cyber crime is one of the complex crime since there is a threat that can undermine the confidence of people and destroy the country economic and political stability if not tackled seriously. And the last challenge for PDRM is integrity, where the PDRM wants the society and public confidence in um, police to improve its image. Because the society mindset already think that police are taking back things a long time ago, as um they has assumed in their mindset. Bukit Amat Integrity and Standard Compliance Department JPS Director Datuk Zambiaya says once revealed that there are a handful of senior PM officer living in luxury by accepting bribe of thousands of ringgit, including allowing drugs trafficking syndicate to operate without police supervision and action. That's the challenge is facing by the PLM for keeping the nation in well-being. That's all for me. Thank you. So for the first idea is the diversity support activities. In the crime prevention through environmental design, CPPED plans support activities in which areas that street crime is hard reported are diversified for the purpose of generating appropriate activities to the function of the area, encouraging to use the open space so as to create distrust of robbers to commit crimes. For example, creating various types of street activities such as buskers, street musicians, street performers, street painters artists, street art or night market also along small roads and so on will attract people. In Kuala Lumpur, we can see these types of activities at Bukit Bintang, Street Art Jalan Alu, Street Art Pertaling Street, the night market at Jalan Tunku Abdul Rahman and others. Indirectly, users of nearby buildings is also constantly observe the space. Through this statement, a social area is generally a meeting space in a community. It serves as an area for the community to socialize and con interact. As a result of these activities, the vitality of the area will increase and this will reduce the potential for crime in the urban areas. So the second idea is provide lighting to the surrounding space and prioritize safety features. Typically, most crime occurs at night. Thus, darkness is a condition that does not guarantee safety. Low visibility due to the darkness can increase the potential for crimes. However, the vitality of space at night also plays a role in creating a safe space. Adequate lighting at night not only for the purpose of creating a beautiful effect but also to enable an individual to see or be seen clearly. This reduces the desire of criminals to commit street crimes. Bright lighting can also reduce the fear of the public, especially in the pedestrian walk and sidewalk of business premises. The lighting should reach a level that allows a person's face to be identified through a normal vision within a distance of 15 to 25 meters. Adequate lighting also helps the CCTV system monitor crime areas more effectively. Therefore, street lighting should be provided comprehensively to ensure safety in urban areas. Good lighting can help in crime prevention, thus reducing the incidence of crime. The last one is natural and plain safety surveillance. Natural surveillance means the ability of an environment to be constantly monitored at all times. Road and areas that people pass through continuously can also add to the number of street observers naturally. In addition, security monitoring and control in terms of patrol is also necessary not only carried out by the police but also the public themselves usually through voluntary. The establishment of the city association is very desirable to encourage the participant and integrated community participation. Other than that, closed-circuit television CCTV cameras in hospital areas are more organized and practical monitoring. Hundreds of CCTV should be placed in crime hotspots to monitor and prevent crime to enable police to identify criminal offenders. For example, Kuala Lumpur City Hall will expand and improve integrated transportation management around Kuala Lumpur through the installation of 5,000 closed circuit television CCTV cameras. It is installed for the use of Royal Malaysian Police for crime monitoring. In addition, it is installed for smart traffic system management, community monitoring and asset monitoring of Kuala Lumpur City Hall. Hi, my name is Muhammad Shari Ikhwan. And uh, in a conclusion, crime in Kuala Lumpur City has diverse causes and effects. 
the involvement and responsibility to reduce and prevent crime are not only should be under the government through their enforcement agencies, but also must involve others, especially public, NGOs, private sector, and others. The strategies to address this issue must be coordinated well, so then it will create a success story. Crime prevention needs to be based on accurate information about the crime problem and existing initiative which could help in reducing crime. A key issue in information gathering is using as many sources from the community as possible. Crime audits enable an understanding of particular areas.